Hi everyone, Zach here. This video is a prep video in which I will explain what we will be doing in the tutorial video. You do not need to watch these prep videos to make your survival game. However, because a lot of people in the RTS series said they liked the lesson preps that were in section 1 of that series, I have decided to include them in this series, but they will be separate videos released before the tutorial videos. Each video will have their own prep video, with the exception of the inventory system videos, which takes place over a span of multiple lessons. There will only be one prep video for the inventory system, though, as I have not finished the series at the time of this recording, I may choose to do similar for other videos. Likely, there will not be a prep video for the landscape editing. That said, Again, you do not need to watch these videos and can skip straight into the tutorial videos. These videos are meant to help explain the logic and the choices being made. I often get asked, will a project work in X version of Unreal? I thought it best to talk about choosing what version of the editor to use. This series was started, though not released, shortly after 4.23 came out and I wanted to head off any questions that might arise, especially given that 4.26 is now out. A lot of beginners of UE4 gravitate towards the newest version of the engine, and when you're starting out, this is an acceptable method. However, the newest version of the engine does not mean that somehow your game will magically be better. So, how do you decide which version of the engine to use, and does it matter which you use? And the answer to that is maybe. So you need to consider a few things. Are there particular engine assets you need from a later version? Are you going to be doing your animations in Unreal? Or are you going to get your animations elsewhere or make them elsewhere? So newer versions of Unreal have built-in animation editors. Do you want to use the built-in day or night cycle that was introduced in 4.25 or volumetric clouds that were introduced in 4.26? I should note at the time of recording this, I have not decided if I will use 4.26's clouds. And if I decide to, we will do videos where we will update this project from 4.22 to 2.3 to 2.4 to 2.5 and 2.6. Also, you need to consider, are you using the stock engine, which you can download from Epic, or are you using a custom engine that you had to build yourself from Epic's GitHub? And if you're using a custom engine, then you're probably going to want to stick with the custom engine you're using. I will say that many of the features I'm using in this tutorial series should be available in versions from 4.16 onwards, at least so far. So when it comes to picking your engine, at the end of the day, it really is kind of up to you. If you want to do this in the same version I did it in, it's 4.22, at least for now, though it will work, as I said earlier, in 4.26. That said, let's talk about what we'll be doing outside of setting up our project in this video. Let's talk about our folder structure focus of this lesson will be on setting up our project and this includes setting up our folder structure and there are many different ideologies and beliefs about how to do this but why does folder structure matter well it makes your project organized an organization makes for easier workflow it makes it easier to iterate things it makes it easier to find actors or meshes or textures that you might be using so from my point of view, it is the foundation on which the project kind of is built. If you have a bad structure, you're going to lose track of things. You're going to make mistakes. And you might have seen this happen in tutorial series where someone can't find their thing and re-import something or recreate something they've already done. I mean, I've recreated functions in the RTS series because of some poor structuring I did there. Also, is there a particular structure or convention that you should use? Well. There are a lot of suggestions out there, and I said people have different opinions, um, and sometimes there are caveats to each. You know, if you're doing a really simple project, you might not need a complex structure. Now, for this, I have a particular structure I'm using, and I will walk you through it as we make the project. 
and I've included a link in the description for the sort of base structure I am using. And it's a suggestion from a community developer, if I remember correctly. And remember, with each of these, there are caveats, there are different approaches, and there are choices that you can make on your own. You know, if you want to use snake casing versus Pascal casing, or if you want to use camel casing, those decisions are up to you. Now, throughout the series, I will be using mostly Pascal casing, though that said, I will be using some snake casing when it comes to saying BP underscore something. Outside of that, it will be Pascal casing. That said, let's get started with the first video.